what the problem is. Hold on. This is what the problem is. This is what the problem is. The, pro the problem is this. The, the problem, hold on. Hold on. The, pro the problem is this. Is that even, even Mark Twain, Samuel Clemens, he said it himself. He said, it's not the things of the, about the Bible that I don't understand that bother me. He said, but what bothers me is the things of the Bible that I do understand. That's what he says. He said, it was the things of the Bible that I do understand that bother me. And you know what? When the Bible in Revelation 21.8 says all liars, thieves, murderers, adulterers, blasphemers will have their part in the lake of fire. We understand that. And you know what? That, that bothers us. That bothers us. That bothers. What is the point, sir? What is the point? Here, here. Listen, listen. What the here? Let me explain to you what the Bible says. The Bible says that a, a carnal mind, a carnal mind, will not receive the things of God. Okay, because they are spiritually discerned. So a carnal mind will not even receive the things of God. Okay, okay. Okay. What's the point? Repent and believe the gospel, sinner. Repent and believe the gospel. I'm giving you a counter argument, and you're here. Here, hold on. I'm, I'm the, first of all, I'm not here to de de debate over variances. I'm here to preach the gospel, okay. number one. Okay? So you're here okay? to say, this is so, the here. correct way to do here. it. Here. And just believe. Don't, don't look. I, I, didn't say, I didn't say just believe. Here's the thing. A sinner, someone who's unregenerate, who, who cannot even understand the things of God. When I say repent and believe the gospel, to you that's foolishness. To you that's utterly foolish. But to those who are being saved is the power of God unto salvation. The That's the words of the Apostle Paul. Is not whether or not you receive the salvation of God. The issue here no. is whether the Bible is word for word correct. Sir, sir, first of all, what you have is only a translation. What this is is only a translation of the text. Let's be perfectly clear. Let's be perfectly clear. No, I didn't say that at all. I didn't say, you study it. You study it. That's right. That's right. That's right. So why is it that people take it word for word and try and condemn things? Hold on, nobody said nobody said take it word for word and try to condemn things. You can understand it. You can take it. You can understand it. What about Paul's letter? Paul's letters. What about Paul's letters? The number one thing that people use to condemn homosexuality is Paul's letters. What about the number one thing they use Leviticus too? Let's look at Paul's letters. Okay. Yeah. He wrote to the church. Why, what? Now pay attention, folks. Pay attention. Hold on. Let me give a disclaimer. Let me give a disclaimer. Pay attention, folks. Once again, a lot of people like to say campus preachers, they like to come out, and what they like to do is that they like to condemn homosexuality. Pay close attention. I didn't mention homosexuality. He entered into the discussion of homosexuality. I believe the book, and I'm going to tell you what I believe and what the book says about homosexuality, but understand, he entered into it. I didn't initiate it. Pay close attention. Go ahead, sir. Romans 1. Okay. You can, grab, you can grab it, too. You can grab it so you don't have to speak from memory. I'm not going to quote okay. it. Okay. Okay, well, if, if, if you're not going to quote it, then don't address it because you could take it out of context. So if we're going to have a debate, let's have a logical debate. You have it there, too. You have it there, too. Study it for yourself. It's Romans 1. It's Romans 1, 18, all the way through 32. That's what we're looking at. And so what, what, what he's going to say... Okay? Okay, I will read it. I will read it. it. What it talks about, it talks about those who suppress the truth and unrighteousness, is what it says. It says that people have, well, Ryan was speaking about that people have, have seen God. They, they already know there is a God. The Bible says in Romans 1 that there's no such thing as an atheist. What it says is that just by the very creation, we know that there's a God. Just by looking out and seeing trees, we know that there's a God. And our consciences bear witness that there's a God, that God's law is written on every one of our hearts. The Bible says that God's law is written on our hearts. So when I say, have you ever told a lie, your conscience convicts you, yeah, I've told a lie. And you know that lying is wrong. I don't have to tell you that. Your mother doesn't have to teach you that. You know that it's wrong. If I say that looking at pornography is wrong, you know that it's wrong. I don't have to tell you that. Now, there'll be a lot of men who say, oh, what's wrong with it? I do it every day. But let me tell you, you wouldn't set your computer up right here and do what you do in the darkness of your bedroom right here because you know that it's wrong. And I tell you one thing, your conscience convicts you of that. And if anybody says their conscience doesn't convict them of that, I suggest you grab your laptop and head over to your grandmother's house. 
and find out how your conscience convicts you. Because what the Word of God says is that God has written His law on every one of our hearts. Okay? And so what men do is they suppress the truth and unrighteousness. They suppress the truth and unrighteousness. And so they deny God and worship the Creator or the creation rather than the Creator. So there's no such thing as an atheist. What that says is that men know God. God has revealed Himself, but we suppress it. So for the little African who's in Africa, the Bushman, and he has never heard the gospel. Someone mentioned the Chinese who have never had the chance to read the gospel. God has written his law on their hearts and God has created things and revealed himself in the sky, in the trees, in the earth, in the air we breathe. And they are without excuse is what the Bible says. And if you're concerned about the ones in darkest, deepest Africa or the Aborigines, I tell you Christian, or I tell you who those who aren't Christian, if you're concerned about them, then hop on a plane and go to the Aborigines like missionaries do. And they bring the gospel of Jesus Christ into deepest, darkest Africa. That's also the men. So God did it. That's who did it. God did it. Not Paul. Paul just wrote it. Paul was inspired. God is the one who gave them up. What's the problem? So they were homosexuals because God gave them over to reprobate minds. That's what the Bible says. Romans, I already told you. You should have looked it up five minutes ago. Romans, run. Okay. Romans 1. I'm specifically talking 26, about Romans 1, 26. And, and you're, this, you're, the the book of the Romans is Paul. Right? Romans 1, 26. So, when he wrote I got to get a drink of water. Hold on. And he started condemning homosexuality. He was condemning the men for losing their lives. Okay. Correct? Huh? Correct? What? Not in Romans 1. That's not what they're saying. That's not what he's saying. He's saying that men, I already went through, the, while you were looking up stuff, I already went through all of Romans chapter 1 and said there's no atheist. I said that, you know what, men suppress truth and unrighteousness. And because men suppress truth and unrighteousness, I talked about missionaries. That to, was all Romans 1. You have to look at the correct verse because you can't prove a point. Yeah, yeah can you read the verse? Yeah, can you read the verse? The verse? Yeah. All right. I'll come back with the verse. Okay. Okay. We can show you the verse. I want to know what you're talking about. I can print up anything on the internet that says anything about the Bible. That isn't everything. I know, I can pull up the internet and show a flying spaghetti monster. Doesn't mean it's right. Give me time. I'm giving you time. Let me preach about something else. When you get to it, let me know. That's what okay. the Bible says. Paul wrote that too. He said that the law of God will stop the mouths of men. You know what? That they'll be confounded. He says, preach the law of God. Christians, there's Christians out here. It says, use the law of God to stop the mouths of men. It says, tear down every stronghold that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. So when people in your churches tell you don't deal with philosophy, just tell them that you love them, don't believe that because Paul didn't say that. Paul went and with the Epicureans, he reasoned with the people. He came out into the public marketplaces and he reasoned with them. Christians, reason. You guys here at the um, American River College who have the liberty to set up a booth, you guys have no idea what a privilege and a blessing that is in this country that we call free. You have no idea, hold on, I'm preaching, what a privilege and a blessing that is. Take advantage of that privilege. Take advantage of that privilege. Do not let anyone stop you from proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ because that's the privilege that we have. Because I can tell you, Brother Ryan, he doesn't have that privilege on his own campus. He had to go to federal court to be able to do what we're able to do today. So understand that, if, that you have a privilege, and if you guys are lax, you make it hard for the gospel everywhere. Because you know what? Unregenerate God-haters, homosexuals, they will shut us down. They will stop us from preaching the gospel. You know what? There's been many a black person who said that one day I thank God for those a hundred years ago who made it possible for me to stand here today. And I tell you what, there'll be Christians a hundred years from now who are thankful that there are those that get out and preach the gospel on college campuses and make it possible for them to do it then. So now I tell you, don't back down. Don't back down.